Hello everybody and welcome to today's video, which is actually going to be the second video in a new series that I'm starting based off of the ECS sample projects provided to us by Unity. So the previous video in the series was centered around the entities.foreach function and I highly recommend that you go check that out before watching this video because in this video we're going to be doing basically the same thing but it's going to be a little bit of a different way to do it. And so there's going to be a few major differences between this sample and the previous one. And one of those is the fact that we're actually gonna have three scripts. So of course we're gonna have our data component and system scripts, but this time we're actually gonna be creating our own custom authoring script. This is gonna give us a little bit more control to do some complex things within our game. Also the structure of our system is going to be a little bit different. So instead of in the last video where we did the entities.foreach, this time around we're gonna be using the ijobchunk interface and we're going to be iterating um, over a chunk. And now a chunk is basically a block of memory which consists of all the entities of a given archetype. Now you can think of an archetype as basically a blueprint of an entity with a given set of components. So if we say had a dozen entities in our game and they all had the same number of components, they would all fit under the same archetype. And in turn, all those entities would be in that one single chunk. And so again, we're just gonna be finding that one chunk in memory and then we're gonna be iterating through all the entities within that chunk. So it's just a little bit of a different way of finding the entities so that we can modify them within our system. Now, the way I showed in the previous video is probably gonna be the much more common way that we're going to be dealing with entities, components, and systems. But the way that I'm showing you in today's video, again, it's gonna give you more control and it's also gonna give you a better understanding of what's kind of going on behind the scenes. So this is a really important video to watch if you do wanna get more into the entity component system. And don't worry if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, I'm gonna slowly walk through everything. So so you should be much more confident on some of these things by the end of the video. Also, I'd highly recommend that you go ahead and download these project files yourself. Again, Unity put them out for free to everyone. And I think it's really important that you start playing around with these and familiarize yourself with the entity component system. So I'll leave a link to where you can download those down in the description right below those like and subscribe buttons. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so here we are over in the second ECS example from Unity, just in the assets folder. It's this uh, number two iJob chunk. Of course, I've opened up the iJob chunk scene and you'll see that it looks pretty similar to our last example. We just have this single rotating cube here. And this time around, it has a rotation speed script attached to it. And instead of taking in radians per second, it takes in degrees per second. And I'll go into why that is in just a minute here. But under the rotating cube, again, we have a child cube and this is basically just a standard game object. There's no convert to entity or no other uh, rotation scripts on it or anything like that. So you'll see that is of course set to 180 degrees per second. And when we actually press play, you'll see that it rotates at you know 180 degrees per second. All right, so we're just gonna get right into some of the programming here. So you'll see that we have this public struct called rotation speed underscore I job chunk. Of course, this is going to implement the I component data interface because this is one of our data components here. And again, we have a public float called radians per second. Now you'll notice that this radians per second is a little bit different than the authoring component, which actually has degrees per second. And that's because this isn't the authoring component. This is just the data component. Now you'll see that we just have this serializable tag on here, and that's just basically all we need for now. So this is actually not what we attach to the game object. That is actually the authoring component. And so this is the authoring component here, and you'll see that it's uh, just a little bit more complex than just doing the standard generate authoring component. And again, the reason for that is just because we have a little bit more flexibility and control over everything. Now, just real quickly to go over some of the attributes, you'll see that we have the requires entity conversion, of course, because um, we can't just attach this to some random game object that's not getting converted to an entity because it's not really gonna do anything. Next, we have the add component menu, and that's just so we can add this through the add component menu. Now, just to demonstrate that, you can just go to add component and go to dots samples, and then you have I job chunk, and then here we have our rotation speed component here. And then lastly, we just have this converter version attribute. Not necessarily something you need to worry about too much, but basically you can kind of put the username of the person who 
last updated the script here and then the version I, I looked into it a little bit and basically if this version number changes then it kind of rebuilds some things in the background but again not something too important that isn't necessarily the focus of this script so here you'll see that we've created this public class called rotation speed authoring and so it inherits from mono behavior of course so we can attach this to just any standard game objects but it's also going to implement the I convert game object to entity interface now along with the I convert game object object to entity, we're going to need to implement this convert function here. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you our one public variable, which is degrees per second, and we're just going to set it to a default value of 360. So of course, this is that degrees per second, which we are um, actually interacting with over here for degrees per second. Now, the reason we do that is because degrees per second is something uh, really easy for us as a human to kind of understand, whereas radians per second is just a little bit easier on the computer to calculate. So actually within this convert method, we're going to be converting degrees per seconds into radians per seconds so that in our system, we can actually read that as radians per second and then be able to take advantage advantage of that slight performance boost. All right, so now we'll actually go into the convert function here. So you'll see that it takes in an entity, an entity manager, and then a game object conversion system. Now we actually don't need to do anything with the game object conversion system. However, the entity manager is what's going to allow us to actually add this component data to our entity. But before we do that, we actually need to go ahead and create this component data. So we're just going to say var data is equal to a new rotation speed i job chunk and with in here we're just gonna say radians per second because again if we go back to our actual data component which we're creating we have this one public float for radians per second so we're gonna be setting radians per second equal to math dot radians passing in degrees per second so this is going to convert it from degrees to radians and we're gonna assign that radians to this new data component radians per second so now once we have that we just say DST manager which of course is our entity manager we're gonna do dot add component data. We're gonna pass in our entity as well as the data component that we're adding to that entity. So again, the advantage of this is we can have something like degrees per second, which again is just very easily understandable by most people. And we can have this field and then convert it to something that's a little bit easier to understand by the computer. And then we can create a data component off of that. And then we can assign that data component to our entity. So now once our entity has the data component, we can actually start using systems that will operate on entities with that data component. So now it's time to implement our system. And this time it's going to be a little bit different than what we did last time. Last time, if you remember, we iterated through a bunch of entities. This time around, we're going to be iterating by chunk. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new entity query. So you'll see that there's this uh, entity query variable here called M underscore group. And then we'll just set this equal in the onCreate method to a uh, get entity query. And then we're gonna be passing in a type of rotation as well as component type dot read only um, using the type rotation speed underscore I job chunk. Now, when we do the entities dot for each like we did in the previous video, it actually runs an entity query under the hood. So this kind of gives you a little bit of a look at what's going on behind the scenes. And so like noted in the comment, it just gives us cached access to a set of component data based off of the specific query. So later on, we're gonna be running a job based on the chunk of what we found within here. So here's the actual code for our job. You'll see that it's just a struct called rotation speed speed job and it of course implements the i job chunk interface. Uh, now we're going to get back to this in just a second, but basically all you need to know for now is we're going to have some of these public variables which we're going to need to set outside of the job here. And so we're actually going to be setting those within the on update function. So of course, it's just a protected override void on update, which again comes from the system based class, which we're inheriting on our system here. Now then you'll see here we are going to explicitly declare read and write access to rotation and read only access to the rotation speed. Again, similar to before, we're going to be reading from the rotation as well as writing back to it. However, we only need to know the rotation speed. We're not gonna be changing the rotation speed. And so the way we do that is we're just gonna get a, a rotation type variable. We set that equal to get archetype chunk component 
type of type rotation. And then we're gonna be doing the same thing for the rotation speed type, the get archetype chunk component type. Again, using the rotation speed here. However, we're passing in true and passing in true is going to mark this as read only. Now here's where I actually create a job. So we'll just say var job is equal to a new rotation speed job. And then within here, this is where we set uh, these variables, these public variables for our job here. So of course, we'll set the rotation type equal to rotation type, rotation speed type equal to rotation speed type. Again, these are just the two variables that we set up here. And then lastly, we'll set delta time equal to time dot delta time. Now to actually schedule the job, we say dependency is equal to job dot schedule. We pass in M group, which of course is uh, what we got from the entity query at the very beginning here. And then we also need to pass in the uh, dependency here as well. And so this creates the job and it schedules it to run on one of the worker threads. However, we're not doing a schedule parallel. We can also do a schedule parallel if we wanted to. Again, um, just a regular schedule. This is gonna separate them out on different worker threads. And this does give us a little bit of performance increase because there's no context switching on the CPU. So it's not doing a bunch of different types of tasks. However, these jobs aren't gonna be running at the same time in parallel. They're still gonna be kind of running one after the other. Now then coming back to our job here, you'll see that um, because we're implementing the iJob chunk interface, we need this public void execute function, which takes in an architect type chunk, an integer for the chunk index, and an integer for the first entity index. And we don't need to worry about setting any of these variables. That's all taken care of kind of behind the scenes. And so within the actual execute function, this is kind of where we're actually going to be doing the work of the job. So here we're going to be getting a variable for chunk rotations. And we'll set that to chunk, which of course is our archetype chunk. And from that, we're going to be getting a native array of rotation types. So this basically just gives us a list of of all the rotation types of the entities that fall under this archetype chunk. And then same thing with the rotation speed, we're just gonna be doing a chunk.getNativeArray, um, passing in the rotation speed. So then basically here, we're just going to be doing a simple for loop, which is gonna be iterating through all the entities that are part of this chunk. And here's where we get the rotation and rotation speed of the current entities. You'll see that using these native arrays, we can just use them pretty similar to regular arrays. We just say chunk rotations, passing in the index of where we're at currently. And then now here is where we actually are going to calculate the new rotation and assign it back to the original rotation. And so the way we can do this is we can just take that native array at position I, we'll set that equal to a new rotation and we'll set this rotation value equal to math.mul, passing in basically the current rotation value and then the axis that we're rotating around as well as the rotation speed in radians per second multiplied by delta time. And so that's basically how the system works under the hood. And so again, you'll see if we go back to Unity, of course we can hit play and the uh, cube is going to rotate as expected. Of course we can duplicate out uh, as many of these as we like and we just can kind of uh, put these around so now because all these entities belong to the same archetype, of course, when we hit play, they're all going to rotate in unison. Again, if we wanted, of course, we can go to, you know, any one of these random cubes and we can maybe make this um, say only go like 30 degrees per second if we wanted. So you'll see that this one down here, um, right here, it's rotating significantly slower than the rest of them. Of course, we could, you know, choose different ones and make them go faster or slower, but I mean, it's a pretty basic just rotation script. Um, but even though it is basic, it really does do a good job at demonstrating these uh, important concepts of ECS and kind of gives you a look at how things look under the hood. Now, again, this probably isn't the preferred way to use the entity component system, but it does give you some more flexibility and more control if you do run into a situation where you need that. And so that is how we can use the iJob chunk interface to iterate over a chunk of entities. Again, a chunk is basically just a block of memory that contains all the entities of a given archetype. Once again, an archetype is basically just a blueprint for an entity with a specific set of components. Again, I also showed you how we can achieve greater control over our project by generating our own authoring components instead of having Unity do it for us. But anyways, I hope with this video that it kind of gave you an insight about a little bit more of the inner workings of Unity and how we can kind of start getting more control over our projects using ECS. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the Entity Component System 
and data oriented technology stack in Unity. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.